Here are two identical images. Both images are 1200 by 900 pixels in size. But the image on the left is 290 kilobytes, while the image on the right is just 84.5 kilobytes. That's less than one third in size. How is that possible? The answer is pretty simple. The image on the left is a JPG image, while the image on the right is a WebP image, which is a next-gen image format. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to implement next-gen image formats on your website. So keep watching. Good morning, namaste, sastriya kal. I'm Yuvraj from Brainstorm Force. And if you're not subscribed to our channel yet, then you're missing out on a lot of interesting content just like this one. So make sure you subscribe, hit that bell icon. And also, if you like this kind of content, make sure to leave a thumbs up on this video as well. Let's start the video. So one of the key benefits of having small size images on your website is that it improves your website's performance. And if you Google the term benefits of a fast website, you'll find hundreds of different articles discussing all the different benefits of having fast websites. And if you've ever used an online tool to test the overall performance of a website, then you're probably aware of Google's own Lighthouse tool. And if you use the Lighthouse tool, then you're probably familiar with this recommendation, which says serve images in next-gen formats. This is one of the most common recommendations that you'd see when you test your website for any kind of performance improvements or issues. So what are next-gen formats? So there are actually three of them, including WebP. So JPG 2000, JPG XR, and WebP are image formats that have a superior compression and quality characteristics compared to their older JPG and PNG counterparts. Encoding your images in these formats rather than JPG on PNG means that they will load faster and consume less cellular data which means your website will perform faster and better for your users. Now you might be thinking, all I have to do is use WebP images. I can do that. I'll just go online and search for a tool like this, convert images to WebP, and then start using the WebP images on my website. That should work perfectly, right? Well, it can work, but I wouldn't recommend it. And the reason I wouldn't recommend it is because WebP image format currently has an adoption rate of around 92.13%. So approximately 8% of overall global users, or I would say browsers, don't support the WebP format yet. Now, 8% doesn't sound much, but think about it like this. Would you give up 8% of your income without batting an eye? I'm sure that doesn't sound good. So technically, if you're using a WebP format directly on your website, you're still almost around giving up 8% of your users. That means around 8% of the overall revenue from your website. So what's the solution here? Now, at this point, you might be thinking, hey, Yuvraj, you just told me that I should be using WebP images and then telling me not to use WebP images. How does that work? Well, you're right. I'm telling you to use WebP images, but I'm not telling you to only use WebP images. And the solution I'm proposing is that you use a plugin on your website that has the capability of converting your existing images and future images to WebP, but also serve this 8% of users who actually don't support WebP images or the browser that don't support WebP right now. I hope that makes sense. But now we have a new challenge at hand, the ever eternal question with WordPress. Which plugin should you actually use? And if you look at the WordPress repository, you'll find a ton of different plugins that support WebP conversion on your website. So which one of these plugins should you use? Well, we've done two studies comparing the most popular image compression plugins out there. Let me show you the studies or the results of the studies. This is the result of the first study and the clear winner that we found out from all these different plugins was Imageify. And the second study, which was done earlier, Imageify was again the clear winner in terms of overall optimization percentage. Now, just to clarify, the optimization percentage that you see on the screen right here does not account for WebP conversion, but in general improvement in compression and resizing of images. So Imageify will not only convert images to WebP format for free, but you'll also see amazing optimization from it for any kind of image formats. That's why our recommendation goes to Imageify. So let's head to our WordPress site and I'll show you how to configure the Imageify plugin to start converting or convert your existing images to WebP format. So we are inside the magical world of WordPress, but let me first show you the kind of website that we are going to optimize. So this is the website that we're going to optimize. As you can see, it has a lot of different kinds of images. That means a lot of savings with WebP images. Let's get back to our website and start the process. So I already have Imageify installed, which you can probably tell because of this entry right here, and you can disable this inside Imageify settings, but when you first install Imageify, you will have to connect it with your Imageify account and also an API key. Because Imageify is a freemium plugin, but don't worry, WebP conversion is completely free for unlimited images. So if you're just using it for WebP, then you don't need to worry about any kind of quotas. Let's go into the settings by going to settings, Imageify. 
So Imagify has a lot of different settings and all of these are important to understand, but we've already done a complete video on image compression. And if you've not checked that video out, I'll link it up in the cards above so you can check it out. And I will explain all these settings in that video. So instead of trying to cover all these settings, I'll just go to the WebP settings, which are right here. So when this option is enabled, uh, Imagify will all automatically convert your existing images to WebP, but it will not start using or implementing those images on your website until you enable this option, which is display images in WebP format on the site. So you have to enable this, and then you have two options to configure, these and these options. Now, what do these mean? As I mentioned, Imagify will detect if a user's browser supports the WebP version and then serve the appropriate image. But what happens behind the scenes is that Imagify rewrites your image URL on the fly. And these rules or these settings just configure how that rule rewriting takes place. If you use the first option, which is use rewrite rules, then it will add the rewrite rules to your site's configuration file, which is your HT access file. And if you use the picture tag, which is a preferred method by Imagify, what will happen is it will replace image tags with picture tags. Now this is a preferred method, but you should test it with your website and especially your theme because sometimes in rare cases, it might have issues and it's also mentioned here. So make sure that uh, once you enable this, then you just test out your theme that everything works fine. And also if you're using a CDN, then just specify this URL of your CDN as you can see in the placeholder image here. So once these setting or once this setting is configured, just go back right here and just save your changes. And now you can start the conversion process. Now you can do it in two ways. You can start doing it in bulk or even one by one. Let me show you both the methods. We'll go to our media library. And to show you some details, what I've done is already run the bulk optimization once. So you'll see a lot of details and what lot of optimization data inside your media library once you've run the bulk optimizer as well. So as you can see, I have some images and you can see the new file size for the images we present and also the amount of savings we have had with the optimization, which is amazing. And you can also see all the details. The original file size was 1.2 meg megabytes, the compression level which was applied. And also we can see a bunch of different options to restore original images and even re-optimize images using different compression levels. And you can also see if the WebP version was generated as well. And you can see all the detail for all the images on your website. So this is a handy way to just understand how much savings you're getting once your images are optimized and also converted to WebP format. Let me also show you the bulk optimization process. And this is the bulk optimization screen. So if you have a lot of images on your website and you want to start optimizing all of them at once, this is the perfect place to start. Now, important thing to understand is that this process not only converts images to WebP, but also will resize them and compress them, depending on the settings that you've configured inside the plugin. And as I mentioned, WebP conversion is completely free with Imagify, but with resizing and compression, you have some quotas which you can check out by going to your pricing page. But for most small websites, the existing free quota should be fine. Let's scroll down a bit. And to start the bulk optimization process, all you have to do is click this button which says Imagify Mall and you'll see a confirmation dialog which you just have to press yes and the optimization will begin. And based on the settings, this might take some time. So don't navigate away from the page, don't close the browser, maybe 10 to 15 minutes for small websites, but just leave the browser open. And once the optimization is complete, you'll also see a complete uh, abbreviated report of how much uh, savings you've got. So as you can see on my website, uh, the original file size was around 22 megabytes. And after the compression and resizing and also WebP conversion, the optimized file size is just around eight megabytes. So that's a great amount of savings on my website. And just imagine the larger the website, the more number of images it has usually, and also the larger amount of savings you'll see with the Imagify plugin when you start using it on your website. And obviously with Imagify, you don't have to worry about if your user is using a legacy browser that does not support WebP because it will automatically detect the compatibility and serve the right image to the right user at the right time. And that's the video guys. These are all the steps, just a handful of steps actually, that you need to take on your website to start serving next gen images on your website. Don't forget there are no downsides, especially when you use the Imagify plugin and you'll have a lot of upside in your website's performance improvement when you start serving these kinds of images on your website. And also if you like this next gen content, then make sure to subscribe to our channel and also hit that bell icon so that we can send you some nice notifications about whenever we upload new videos. And if you ended up liking this video, I'll appreciate if you just leave a thumbs up on this video. And if you have any questions, obviously, you can leave them down in the comments as well. And everything I talked about and all the posts that I showed will be linked down in the description of this video, including a link to the Imagify plugin and also their website. So make sure to check it out. It's a fantastic little plugin. You were listening to Yuvraj from Brainstorm Force. I'll catch you in the next video. Till then, take care, stay safe.